As the current crisis in Gaza winds down and people there begin to pick up the pieces and count the costs of the horrific bloodshed, I was reminded that besides the nation's highly honed arsenal of death, non-lethal forms of crowd control have been tested and used effectively by Israel, including one that has become known as the skunk on the Palestinian populace for years now. The highly nasally penetrative stink bomb is a non-lethal but notoriously foul sewage smelling liquid that can be mixed with water and sprayed on protesters. The smell takes days to fade from the skin of demonstrators even after multiple showers, and Israel has sought to export the skunk to other nations to help with dispersing violent mobs and with crowd control. And while the sickening aroma has worked on its Palestinian subjects, there is one test group that the vile odor has not been able to cow. The Indian and their mighty ability to withstand any level of grotesque pungency based on their daily lived experiences within Indian settlements and within urban areas. Hi everyone, just to let you know, I have some old favorites as well as new t-shirt designs on sale right now. Link to find them is in the description and would like to thank you in advance as it really does help the channel. As for years now, content like this has been put into an algorithmic black hole as well as being demonetized. So thanks again, as well as I'm pretty sure you'll find something you will like. While I did hear about this story a few years back, I thought it interesting enough to resurrect given the intersection of current headlines being dominated by Israel as well as the social media saturation of memes on India and Indians with regards to their toiletry habits. So back in 2017, India's paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force, or the CRPF, well, it rejected the Israeli stink bomb used for the purposes of crowd control on the grounds that it wasn't smelly enough. The CRPF wanted to acquire the non-fatal Israeli stink bomb, that being the skunk, to deter stone-throwing protesters in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir state. Its earlier efforts at crowd control in the turbulent province included using shotguns, which fired special cartridges containing tiny iron balls and irregular shaped metal shards. However, these had blinded more than 100 people, which led to a public outcry. For its part, Israeli security services have used skunk, the malodorous substance dispersed through water cannons, since at least 2008. And the substance is made from a mixture of baking powder, yeast, and other ingredients. The organic and non-toxic skunk emerges from the cannons as a yellow watery mist, and its overpowering odor can linger for days on human skin. In clothes, the smell can remain for months, if not years. In New Delhi, during a test run, the bomb liquid was sprayed on a captive crowd of CRPF personnel and civilian volunteers that participated but to no avail. What the CPRF discovered, as reported by the Hindustan Times, is that the foul-smelling weapons employed by the Israeli security forces on Palestinian protesters were wholly ineffective on their Indian counterparts as they could tolerate its disgusting and vile malodorous scent without being so much as phased by its putridness. The stink bombs were found to be ineffective during trial, as Indians probably have a higher threshold of enduring stench, an unnamed officer from the CRPF told the Hindustan Times. The Indian tolerance for malodorous smells, it appears, is too great for the almighty skunk. The test was carried out, as stated previously, in New Delhi, which is a dense megapolis known for its lurid and putrid stenches, which I personally can attest to having been there. As well, a large portion of the country's population is used to living in foul-smelling environments, which are becoming even worse with the pressure of population and the breakdown of civic facilities. In Bombay or Mumbai, 
the odors of that city have been likened to those of a wet, smelly diaper wrapped around one's head. As these stenches emanate from the overflowing landfills, public toilets, and the like. Adding to this problem is that India accounts for 59% of open defecation in the world and over 90% in South Asia. And this has prompted the Indian social media campaign led by UNICEF to help arrest the problems and vile aromas created by the said open defecation. Known as take a poo in the loo, it's commonly shortened to poo to loo. As well, the Take a Poo in the Loo campaign also produced an official music video and an official mascot, who is the anti-hero Mr. Poo, an anthropomorphic lump of excrement. But of course, the campaign has been the subject of jokes on social media, but has also turned to prompting public anger within the country. Either way, one of my favorite responses to the failed attempt at using the absolutely vile-scented Israeli skunk was on Reddit by an Indian man named Sar Sashi Thor. In the post, he stated, It is a fact of little provenance that the average Indian toddler can withstand with a mere dollop of nasal goo sent forth to guard his still relatively tender olfactory passages, a stench that would knock the fiercest Viking warrior cold. Our great nation is indeed the high society of stink, where new and more pungent smells introduce themselves every year like debutantes at a ball and dance the fandango and the foxtrot with other, more familiar and jaded odors. Thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please check to see that you're still subscribed as YouTube has unsubscribed tens of thousands of people without their knowledge or consent and is algorithmically strangling channels like this. As well, if you'd like to help support this channel, it'd be very greatly appreciated. Ways of doing so are in the description. And with all of that said, thank you again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.